So, one of the reasons that there is an access panel on here is so that you'll be able to repair the damage. And our plans tell us that the damage is two and seven eighths up and two and seven eighths over. Now, normally being uh, damaging something isn't this precise, but uh, we want it to work out. And you can see I didn't do a perfect job on uh, riveting that side there. There was an oopsie. So here's our two and seven eighths inch by two and seven eighths inch damage. Two and seven eighths over two and seven eighths up. Now this would have been a lot easier if we had done this before we put it all together, but that wouldn't exactly be very fair since this is supposed to be repairing damage. Um, so we are going to go ahead and, and uh, repair a section. I don't know exactly what this would be. This would be like a dent or something like that. And we are going to drill a one inch hole to simulate drilling all the damaged area out of here. And you might, uh, in real life, you might use a little hole cutter or something like that to do it. But uh, for our one inch hole, Center punch. Pilot drill. And now I am going to introduce you to another tool, and that is the Unibit. All right, our Unibit, sometimes called a step drill, is wonderful for sheet metal, and it drills a variety of different size holes. This one starts at a quarter, steps out to three-eighths, and then it moves on into 36 sixty-fourths, and 11 sixteenths, and 13 sixteenths, and seven-eighths, and this one right here is the one we want, one inch. I'm going to mark this with my red marker, because I don't want to accidentally drill too far. I've had a few students do that, and that makes a bad day. We only want to drill this out to one inch, which means we need to stop before we get to the red line. I'm going to use my cordless drill, but there's a variety of different drills we can use to use the Unibit. I'm going to put it on low because I don't want to get this thing swinging really fast. And we're going to very carefully drill this out to one inch. there is my one inch hole. This hole would have been where the damage was and we would begin by drilling out the damage section and now we're going to have to splice in another section. And we're going to splice in that section per AC 4313-1B or also very similar to uh, splicing it in for uh, by the Cessna service manual. Uh, we're going to splice it in by splicing a circle by patching a circle behind it and putting a little filler circle inside. We need to make those two circles. And one of those circles is one inch in diameter, and one of those circles is two and a half inches in diameter. They're made just the same way I made this circle, so I'm not gonna show you making them. So here's the pieces that are gonna form our patch. This is called the doubler, and it's gonna fit inside this plate, back over the top, and there's an area that's spread around behind so we can rivet into it. And then this piece is called the filler, and the filler is there to make everything look aerodynamically smooth. One of the things that I find when I pull my filler out is I made my filler just a little bit too big because it won't actually sit inside. It needs to physically sit inside my circle. And it's better to cut this down smaller than to cut the circle in bigger. Ideally, when it's done, there should be just enough width that I can get my thumbnail in between the filler and the other edge. So I'm going to need to trim this down a little bit. After I'm done, this is all going to be riveted in a nice sandwich. Rivets holding this in, and then rivets holding this back behind here. Um, there are also going to be flush rivets, and we're going to have to double dimple to get them in place, but more on that later. I'm going to go back and I'm going to trim this down until it's the right size. So I made my circles. I spaced my circles properly. You can see now that this circle fits as it should. Now I have to lay out my rivets. There's going to be eight rivets laid on the, out on the doubler plate. And the doublet plate is going to fit across the back like we said before. So once my rivets are laid out across this doubler plate, I'm going to go ahead and drill them. And I'm going to need to drill this edge very much the same way that I drilled this side so that this plate fits right centered 
across the top here. The other plate that I need to put in, the other rivet spot, it doesn't need to be perfectly spaced. All it really needs to do is it needs to ensure that there are three rivets to hold it down. This one doesn't hold any flight loads. It only holds aerodynamic loads. So just three rivets in the center that are going to hold everything down. And now it's time for me to drill these plates. And like everything else, we'll drill and Clico, drill and Clico, drill and Clico to make sure everything fits normally. There are my first three holes. Now I don't need to keep working on this section, so I'm going to unclico this to drill my next eight holes. Those are going to hold the little patch plate onto the doubler once the doubler fills the hole. Now I need to drill my eight precise holes. And seven. Here's where the process gets a bit crazy. I need to transfer these holes exactly onto here. But I have this piece, and this piece can be used to establish where the center is. And this is where I'm going to be a little bit, uh, shall we say, sneaky? I'm going to Clico this piece onto the back instead of onto the front. And when I Clico this piece onto the back, It's going to help everything line up. Ah, I got to find out, find exactly where it code. I got it in the wrong spot. There we go. That's how it fits. So I'm going to put one Clico, two Clicos. Two is enough to specify. Now this is going to center itself up on the hole, and when it centers itself up on the hole, that's what's going to allow me to drill through that hole and Clico my first piece into position. Now making sure it's centered up in the hole and it's not wedged on one side or the other, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to Clico the second piece, the second hole. And I can continue moving my way around, drilling all eight holes. Sneaky, huh? Now, I have to be careful when I go to put things back together again, because they all have to fit in the same order. So this piece is going to fit back from the bottom side. I'm going to have to take this piece loose, clico it back to the top again. And while I'm doing all of that, I need to peel all of this um, masking tape and plastic because we're ready to begin riveting just as soon as we can. Now it's time to attach these pieces together, but we're making what's called a flush repair because people who make damage to their airplane don't want to be reminded about that damage later on, so we want that damage to disappear. So I'm going to need to use flush rivets as well. And to use flush rivets on thin metal, I need to dimple the metal. Here's a male dimple and a female dimple die, and they're in my rivet squeezer. I can bring this across, and this is a whole lot like the flanging that we did on the holes of the spar, except that it is on the scale of a rivet, and it'll just let that rivet drop right into position. This is done on thin metal only. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dimple each of these holes so that we are going to be ready to attach our, our flush rivets. We'll dimple all the way around. And once all of these holes are dimpled, I'm also going to need to dimple all of these holes. So here they go. One, 
two, three. And now all of my holes are dimpled. Um, to help them fit perfectly, I personally find that it works better if I go ahead and dimple them together once again. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to hit both of these together, dimple them really nice and firm. And one of the things that you're starting to see is my nice flat piece isn't nice and flat anymore. Anytime I start bending on something, it's going to bend somewhere else. Anytime I start flanging on a hole or, or dimple dying on a hole. So uh, we're going to come back and we're going to address that and fix that before we're done. But the first thing we're going to do is finish this um, off with our proper rivets. So now it's time to rivet these two pieces together. And I'm going to rivet the little patch plate onto the doubler plate. It's a lot easier to do it while it's outside of the project than when we put it all, the, all together and put it inside the project. So I've got a 426 flush rivet. I've got my mushroom set. And here's my little patch plate, almost ready to mount. But again, it's all dished out, so I'm going to take and undo the dishing. And to undo the dishing is going to require that I hit it pretty good with my rubber mallet. I have a nice soft rag. That's to give it a little bit of room for spring back. And I'm going to flatten this piece down into the edge. And now we're getting much, much better. Now we're close to the flat that we're supposed to be. I'm probably going to hit it a couple more times here. Down into the wood. And there, I'm pretty happy with how flat it is once again. Now, I should be able to take and put this in here. And I'm dimpled back on the back on my doubler, but I don't have that same dimple set inside the holes here. Nor can I use my rivet squeezer on these holes. So I need another strategy to dimple those holes. Clico one. Two Clicos will probably be adequate for what we're getting ready to do. We'll Clico it in place. And you can see our patch all in position here. And now what we need to do is dimple across here. These are the tools that I have to use to, draw, to do this dimpling. And this bucking bar carries the male dimple die. And this rivet set carries the female dimple die. I'm going to put the bucking bar on this side. And I'm going to use my rivet set to force this dimple to happen across the back. I'm going to place this in position, line everything up, and Rivet until my dimple is formed. Again. Rivet until the dimple is formed. And again. Drive until my dimple is formed. Now, I could go ahead and do all of these, but I'm going to stop and drive these rivets right now before I allow any more distortion on the metal. So we're back to our flush set and our flush rivets. Dimpling. Back to flush riveting. Now I can undo my Clicos. And dimple the last two holes. And 
finish the flush rivets, and that will complete this project. So here's our project. We've got our repair complete, a flush patch. Now if we were actually uh, in the field, we would probably finish this up by putting a PR across it or something like that and painting it, and this whole damage would disappear and we'd never be able to even see that. This is our completed project number three, and I hope you can do yours uh, better than mine. Thank you.